is the University of Michigan lacrosse team celebrating. And, and they do it well, as you mm. can see. That, after they beat Ohio State for the first time ever. When you beat your rivals for the first time, you get to celebrate. That ha happened at the end of last season. Yeah, and good vibes only for the Wolverines, who are looking to chop up, chalk up a few more wins in that column in 2020 after a rough 2019 season. Michigan going four and nine, just one and four in conference play. Their only Big Ten win coming in that final game of the regular season over Ohio State University, as we just saw in that celebration video. Definitely not a bad way to end the season, but can they build off of it come next weekend's season opener? Well, with the help of this guy, Alex Bukanavich. They just might. As a sophomore last season, the Connecticut native led the team in both goals with 25 and assists with 23, the most in a single season in program history. We now bring in the head coach out there at Michigan, Kevin Connery. Coach, I want to start at the end of last season because you guys have that win over your rival, Ohio State, such a gigantic win for the program. What momentum does that guy give you guys as you enter 2020? Well, I think, you know, any kind of measure of success that you have is a good springboard into the into the next year. Um, it was really great to send our seniors off on a high note. Guys like Brent Noseworthy, Nick DiCaprio, guys who really um, did a great job growing this program, uh, to send them out with a win over your rival, the first one that we were able to, to kind of come through with. Um, it certainly adds a lot of confidence. Uh, but what it does say is, look, this is there is a path. We obviously, we, we can compete with top five, top 10 teams. We're able to do this, put that win under our belt, but understand what it takes to do that consistently. Now we're out here to prove that it's not just a flash in the pan. We can do this on a day in and day out basis. Uh, obviously, you talk about the consistency, and we've seen at times glimpses of what Michigan and this program can be with, with wins over ranked teams. And then, obviously, you've had your struggles at times in the Big Ten over the last couple of years since you got there. What's your message coming from a place at Maryland where obviously you had so much success to your team about what it does take in order to have that consistency competing at the top of the Big Ten? Yeah, it's not just the 2.5 hours that we're here at practice. You know, it's every single second of your life um, will dictate consistency. Our big mantra around here is we live our life like we play the game. We play the game like we live our life. And if we're not taking care of business in school, if we're not taking business, taking care of business in the classroom or social lives or anything like that, it's not all that's going to carry over. Uh, one thing this year, we have tremendous leadership from our group of seniors and graduate students who we were able to bring back, and then a good core group of young players uh, who are putting their heart and soul in this thing and understand that you know it's a day in day out uh, grind in order to to be great uh, greatness doesn't come on saturday afternoon it comes on you know monday morning so um that's really where our point of emphasis has been and the guys have really been receptive to it they're holding each other accountable uh, they're being not just uh, we don't just have a good core of, of leaders but we have great teammates behind them you guys do lose some different pieces, but I was a little surprised in, in the amount of offense that you actually have coming back this year. It's led by Alex Bukinavich. Uh, what is, stands out to you about him for somebody who maybe hasn't had a chance to see him play all that often? I think it's, it's, uh, it's creative. Uh, he has a creative streak in him that he can do some things. You're just like, wow, I didn't know a lacrosse player could do that. But it's also a toughness factor. He takes a lot of punishment the way that he plays but he's, he's invested into the weight room more here over this year. And he is, uh, he's, he's put on some pounds in terms of, um, in terms of his upper body and his lower body. So he's, he's able to kind of dish it out as much as he's taken it. So the specialist positions become such a big factor when you look at faceoff and goalie into a team's success. And you guys obviously struggled at the faceoff X at times last year, and you got to find a new goalie. Where are you in those specialist spots as you look ahead to this spring? Sure, we're excited to welcome some guys back from injury 
in the faceoff position. We've added some depth there, depth there with two freshmen that we have on campus. Um, you know, but Nick Rowlett, who's coming back as a sophomore after an injury last year, and and uh, Matt Delly's coming off and and for his senior uh, campaign. So we're really excited to have those two back in the lineup. Um, but as you know, in in um, these these faceoff guys, they take a beating. Uh, the important thing that what we've learned is, you know, we're really excited to have those guys back. But our experiences last year has allowed us to be more creative in the middle of the field and figure some things out, which can only benefit for us uh, in the future. You know, obviously, uh, we're hoping that Matt and and Nick can be uh, major contributors, but we always plan for everything. So um, we have a lot of experience in uh, being more creative in the middle of the field. As for the goaltender position, uh, we have senior uh, Matt Trowbridge here who has started a couple of games in his career, as well as John Kirikoff uh, as a sophomore. Those two are battling out for the starting position. Uh, it's going to go all the way down to the wire. Both have uh, done some phenomenal things in goal, and uh, we're really excited to see how this plays out over the next week and a half. Finally, let's talk about you here because you're entering your third year there at Michigan. What have you learned from the, the first couple? Well, geez, that's kind of a broad question, I would say. You know, I've learned a tremendous amount. You know, I'm very fortunate to have a background the way that I had able to kind of come from different places and learn a lot of different styles. You know, uh, a big influence, obviously, is Andy Copeland, who was one of my um, – someone I worked for at Fairfield University now with the PLL. Uh, he has always uh, been a good supporter of mine and, and able to bounce some things off. So um, I think what I've learned – over my three years is that I don't know enough, you know, and, and I'm always constantly striving to learn more, whether it be uh, from my assistant coaches, from my peers, from my administrators, from my peers on campus, from other sports. It's always great to uh, be at a place where I can sit down with, you know, some legends in their personal games um, with like Carol Hutchins or, or uh, you know, uh, some of the other coaches here on campus. So um, that's kind of one of the things that I've really enjoyed being here. Well, it was purposely broad. That's that's what lets you take it wherever you want to go with that question. Uh, Coach, we can't wait to see you guys in a couple of weeks here on LSN against Hofstra. Good luck with the start of the season, and we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you very much. And as I just mentioned, we have Michigan right here on LAC Sports Network a couple of different times this season. First, Michigan at Hofstra, February 15th. 11 a.m. Eastern, so grab the coffee, get up with this early. And then a month later, Michigan is at Delaware. That's March 21st, a 2 p.m. Eastern start for that one. You can watch both LaxSportsNetwork.com and the FTF Next.